Right, our next session is about how to do all of that critical thinking. So I'm joined by Jeanette Wallace um, in the studio. Jeanette, welcome. Hello. Thank you very much. I see you've bought some food. <laughs> I have bought some food. I didn't realise there were rules about the food. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I brought some chocolate brains. Oh, thank you. Oh, how lovely. So. I've never been offered chocolate brains in this studio before. <laughs> well, that's very kind of you. Excellent. Uh, and this is a, a perfectly appropriate thing to eat during a critical thinking conversation. Yes, yes. Lovely. Well, thank you. We shall enjoy tucking into those later. Now, Jeanette has been um, an associate lecturer or tutor with the Open University for um, quite a number of years, haven't you? And uh, you teach in, in science um, from level one all the way up to master's, which is quite interesting because you're going to have a very broad, um, I guess, perspective of what critical thinking is all about. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> so we're going to talk about this and we're going to, um, we've, we're going to change the widgets over now as well. So we've just got one this time, um, which is about which technique you feel most confident in practicing. Um, so do you feel most confident in the idea of whether you're studying already or perhaps something just theoretically you might like to think about using content and examples, using themes or doing things like um, linking and signposting. So various different techniques there that one can use when in particular writing um, critically. So we will focus a little bit about that. So Jeanette, we've been talking a little bit about that. John was talking about what critical thinking was yeah. all about. Um, and the key things that he was mentioning was that it was different to criticizing something. So it's not just about saying, well, it's no good or this, this and this. Yeah. And he also said that it's very important not to use your own voice in doing that. So we're trying to develop, I guess, an academic argument as opposed to an individual perspective about how rubbish this, that or the other is. He said that's definitely not critical thinking. We also mentioned that in terms of the grades, critical thinking can be really important, in particular from distinguishing, say, a B from an A. So there's, there's issues there in terms of marks, but also he said that those are quite specific to levels. So at level one, you are often trying to be descriptive. You were trying to outline things, for example. And then when you start going into level two, you're then starting to, I guess, evaluate, um, compare and contrast and use other sorts of words that might yeah. indicate some critical thinking. So where do you as a, as a tutor see that distinction in terms of your students' journey? When do they start getting the hang of critical thinking? When does it start to matter? Um, in my experience as a science tutor, um, it starts, they do start a little bit in level one, maybe not too much, uh, as an experience, yes, they would perhaps analyse a graph, so something quite simple, um, comment on it. So it's not really critical, dis critical writing, yes, but it might be just a few comments about a graph. It tends to be more beginning in level two, where they might be writing an essay where there needs to be arguments or a claim put forward and they need to be start giving um, evidence to, to come alongside those arguments and claims that they're writing about. So I'd say it begins in level one and you start to think a bit more critically as you're studying and it becomes more apparent as you're answering questions in level two, I would say, in science anyway. Now, this is an interesting idea because John said, you know, there was this idea of, of um, you know, meta thinking, meta representing ideas. So you're thinking about what you're thinking about, metacognition. Um, but are those students then who are starting to pick up points of a graph, do they then realise that they're critically thinking? Probably not, no. Um, I, maybe do we actually realise that we're critically thinking all the time in our lives? Um, you know, everyday activities that we do, we're critically thinking. So imagine as I'm a tutor, I might be answering emails um, and I might get a request from a student for an extension, for example. So I get an email saying I would like an extension. In answering that email, I'm actually going to be critically thinking about what I'm going to be doing. So I will be looking at the student. Have they had an extension before? What is the reason for the extension? How long do they want? Um, and it, it, you know, one day, two weeks, and I will be evaluating that information and make, coming up with a decision or an opinion based on that to say, yes, you can have an extension or no, it's not a valid reason or whatever. So even just doing a simple thing like answering an email, I'm critically evaluating the information in there. So it's everyday life, you will be critically thinking anyway. 
Okay. Now, I know that, um, you know, the library are coming to talk a little bit about some evaluation frameworks later, and we've got these various ones that we use. In particular, in science, we use, you know, prompt frameworks yeah. and various things like that to help, I guess, identify and compare and contrast various aspects or, or certain um, areas around something that we're looking at. How important, then, would you say those frameworks are? Because what you're talking about, I guess, is critical thinking in everyday life, the way that we think, we appraise situations, we, yeah. you know, we're thinking beings, so when does it become just normal thinking, critical thinking? How useful are frameworks? works and trying to get a grip on structuring some of those thoughts? I think they're very useful. Um, you mentioned prompt. That in science, we use prompt quite a lot. It's a type of analysis. Um, prompt is an acronym and it stands for a variety of uh, words. And you look at it, well, normally an article, say, in science, but you can apply it to a website, anything really. And it's just a method by which you would look at information and note down different aspects of it. You could also create a table. There is a table in the critical thinking um, booklet that's on the Skills for Study website. There's a table in there where you, you, when you're looking at information, you would write a description and then you would look at any claims in it, any weaknesses or strengths. And so you start noting down what you are thinking so that when it comes to answering a question, you can use that information to, to input into your answer. So things like essays, you would you'd be looking for arguments and you'd be looking for points of two sides of an argument, perhaps. And so you need to gather that information together. And actually, there's those, they're useful, those things. But what I suggest to my students um, is to actually get a big piece of paper. Um, for example, an old bit of wallpaper, the back of an old piece of wallpaper. And if you've got an essay, write the essay question in the middle and then if you've got certain points or arguments you want to make, write them down and then gather information and add it to your bit of wallpaper and stick it on your wall. And there you have your essay. And what you do then is construct an essay from this. It's sort of like a mind map, I guess, that you would talk about. And then you would construct lots of arguments and write your essay based on your wall, bit of wallpaper that you've got on your wall. So I often tell students, Think, think of things visually, so record the information, but then maybe record it visually, little diagrams and things like that. Because often students don't just think, they, they do think visually and it helps them a lot. Yeah, no, absolutely. Last week, actually, we had Nikki Harlow, um, who was an arts tutor, and she was talking to us about mind mapping. Okay. And what was really interesting was she was saying, you can have all of these ideas, but how many of these are really relevant to the question? And yeah. we were starting to carve off then the section that was relevant and trying to, you know, stick tight and, and hold to that. It's interesting because when we asked people about techniques that they felt confident about using, 80% okay. said um, using content and examples, they felt confident in yeah. using those, whereas only 8% said using themes and 11% said losing linking and signposting. Uh, that's gone down just a little bit actually as the data has been coming through. But these are very interesting ideas aren't they because so often we think that critical thinking has to relate to content and largely it does. Yeah. But the other two points about using themes, um, which, which may be things that I guess emerge from module materials, they might be mm. strands that run through a course, um, and also linking and signposting, a real sort of writing technique. Yeah. Those techniques are also useful for presenting a critical view on something as a tool. But I guess people aren't so confident using them, perhaps because we've got quite a lot of level one students here. Yeah. So going back to the idea then of, of the sort of the 80% or 78% um, about using content and examples, you've spoken about trying to break some of these things down. So we might use prompt or we might use a various sort of framework. And you were saying to students, you know, write them down, get things down. Can students then think, do you find that they think, oh, I don't know what headings to put so I'm fine filling in a table no yeah, problem at all yeah. but then what do I include yeah. what don't I include and if I don't I used to remember doing this if I don't include everything will I be missing a big bit yeah what would you say about just getting on and going for it and trying to look at things in that sort of way no matter what framework you've, you've got to work yeah. with well they need to just like you say get on with it write the answer but the other thing that you can do that many students don't even think about is actually be crit critically thinking about the question and what it's asking and actually spending time analysing questions and what is it that the question is asking them to provide. You know, there are, there are often a lot of information within a question giving you hints and tips and suggestions of where you might go. But this is why sometimes you go off on a tangent 
um, because you, you write your essay, you think, oh, I need to include all of this information. It's about, say, depression, um, the causes of depression. I'm going to write everything that I know about the causes of depression. But actually, you need to go back to the question. Perhaps the question only wanted to know about the biology of depression. Perhaps it didn't want to know the psychology of depression. So being critical of the questions will help you in your assignment as well. Excellent. Brilliant point. Um, how do you then know when students are submitting an essay that's, that's an A to a B, when they're using that critical thought, when do you sit there and think, actually, the student is really applying some of these critical thinking ideas? What, what signposts or what, what things do you look for that would indicate that? Well, it's really, um, you can tell from the writing that there's a true understanding of the material. So they haven't just passively read the material and noted down information. They've actually looked at the material understood it and developed an argument from it so that they can and you can see the arguments in the writing they might say um, give a point and then they justify it with evidence that is good evidence from maybe the module material yes. not just from personal experience very good which point. is needed on well science modules in particular. So they've identified where the appropriate evidence yeah. is used and then, then they're making the points in, I guess, in an in individual way. So they're saying, well, I've read this here and there's this point. And I guess just that linking of yeah, two things shows together. some aspect of, of criticality. Ben, where's Annie gone? Um, so H Day popped up in the chat and mentioned he'd left he's his bag. He's supposed to be at school. Yes, he is, but he seems to have left his bag somewhere. So and he's going to have to try and find it for him. Um, not really anything I can see around here, but I'll um, I'll try and have a look. It's a lot tired here, actually, to be completely honest, since well, he's not there. Don't want to say anything bad. <laughs> about this, you know. <laughs> no, don't no, actually. Don't, don't say anything, just in case he's watching, because you never know. Definitely is. He's yeah. making sure that we're looking for it. So there is a search party out to look for his bag at the moment. So it's all good. Um, okay. Chat room's going mad. Yeah. Of course. Um, in terms of how they how they kind of structure and. and they, they do a lot of visual kind of building together of all of their, their points for their essays. So Michael Hunter, for instance, loves a, loves a spider chart. Good. Um, and then we, we have it down to using a combination of mind maps and bullet points to, to try and picturise it as well. Um, there's also talk of um, referencing and um, good referencing, bad referencing and, and where to go to find some references. And there's a lot of people that are mentioning that Wikipedia isn't the best idea. Um, to use that. Ah, good, um, good. Well, we'll listen to what the library have to say all about that yeah, later. Which is great. Um, but, but yeah, over, overall, everyone's really engaged and, and loving the content. So Brilliant. What are some of the questions about referencing, Ben? Is there anything that we need to clarify here before we go on? Um, so it was, it was really just about a where is a good source, effectively. Um, so that's, that's where Wikipedia then came from. Um, so it's, it's really just from... from I guess my end, just just making sure that you're aware that the site you're looking at or the the journal that you're looking at is a is a relevant one to to yeah. the course effectively. That is such a brilliant point. And of course, I'm glad to see some people have been reading the programme, which I hope has sort of sparked that off, because the library will, in fact, be talking about sources and, and I guess certain frameworks that can be used to critically evaluate the extent to which one should believe in some of those sources. But Jeanette, what would you say about students who think, I'm going to be really critical, I'm going to go online, I might go into Wikipedia or Google Scholar, and I'm going to find out everything there is to know that my tutor probably doesn't know, and then they'll think <laughs> I'm being really critical. What would you say about, I guess, selecting the right material? and when do you know what is appropriate to include? Well, we, could, we, we never say, you know, don't go outside the module materials. You know, if students are interested in a subject, then yes, go ahead, go and look for external sources, but, you know, keep to um, peer-reviewed articles or, or textbooks is usually the best way. Um, I would say that normally an assignment is... It explains in the assignment what they're looking for. And, you know, each module, we're looking to see what you understand about the module materials that are there. So focus in on the module materials. And you can in include external material, but not to the, you know, don't leave out something from the module materials and include something from an external source because you think it's the, you know, brilliant answer. Try and focus in on the module materials um, for your information. 
and the, there's often links on the module websites to other sources and they're good places to start looking. It's a brilliant point actually because uh, you know sometimes I do think students think oh yes I'll go and do that and you you haven't covered x y and z point and of course in a chapter you can't can you? No. They, they, they won't be exhaustive representations of things um, but uh, you know it, it's about being appropriate and like you say you're marked on what's what's in the module. Yeah. Ben is there a question? Yes, so we had a question come in from uh, Matthew Cole, um, and he just said, so timeliness is a part of critical thinking because you have to think about, is this up to date when analysing your evidence? So I know from, from law, in fact, in cases, um, they're always evolving and always changing. So would you, would you consider having the information as being up to date as a core part for referencing? Very interesting. Mm. And I guess it depends, doesn't it, on the subject? It depends on the module as well. Um, for one of the level three modules that I tutor on, um, it's one of the final modules, and the students do a literature review. Um, and so they have to do a lot of critical thinking and analysing and writing in that mod particular module. And they'll choose a topic, um, and some of that material can be quite old because the topic is very narrow and there's not many, not much research going on in that particular area. So it, it depends on the subject and the topic and um, whether something is classed as old, I guess. Yeah, and how much is going on? I mean, one yeah. of the courses we teach on, um, you know, we're looking at things like depression and dementias, yeah. both of which are completely different ends of the spectrum. Yeah. So some things are happening really quickly in terms of dementia treatment and care. Um, and, and so then I guess the year and the, the relevance of that source yeah. becomes a lot more important than it might do with something that's a little bit, you know, more long-standing academically. Yeah, and some some subjects, that just there's not the research in it or the the interest in it or perhaps they haven't found anything new for quite some time. Yeah, but it's a, it's a very good point and I think, you know, it's, it's about being appropriate with those things and thinking, well, does time really, you know, change? Does Do those things, I guess, have an impact yeah. in terms of what we're looking at? You know, if something's 10 years out of date, you know, are we as humans still the same 10 years ago as we yeah, were now? Yeah. And also, I guess, how long it takes to actually get the darn thing published and well, out yeah. there as yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. there can be an issue of things not being possible to be so up to date in yeah, certain yeah. circumstances. Mm, excellent. OK, so we, we've mentioned some tools and some various library things that we're going to look at. Did you want to give, um, a, just to sort of end off, did you want to give um, anything um, like a live scenario, possibly including chocolate brains? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very keen to eat. <laughs> because I, I've had a think about this, and I yes. think that um, that they, uh, they don't comply with any of the notices we've had from security. No, they're not cake, and they're not a frying pan. Or excessive. It's, no. <laughs> so we can oh, use them. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so what what is there that we can say then about about chocolate? It's a topic of uh, of no. much delight at the Student Hub Live. Well, we could actually think about um, whether chocolate affects memory, for example. Um, we we may say you ha we had to write an essay about um, chocolate and memory. Chocolate affects memory. Now, if this was a level one essay, you would, you know, it would be very descriptive. And if it was level two, we'd be looking for some arguments. So we'd expect you to go off and you know, go through the textbooks and find out yes or no, chocolate affects memory or not. So we could have a little think about, you know, out there, do, do, what do you think as a student, do you think chocolate affects memory? Well, what is chocolate in the or first place? We've got two different types well, here. Yes. Yes, what is chocolate? And is there any evidence that it affects memory? If you went out there and you were looking at um, the publications of Cadbury's, for example. Oh, oh. No, no, yes, yes, off bye. Now, <laughs> They're one of our sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm only joking. If one no of the in here. <laughs> companies who make chocolate claimed that it was... Um, good for memory, for example, is that a valid claim? And you could then go and analyse the information and evaluate it and think, is there bias in this research? You know, it's been sponsored by a company who makes chocolate. Do they want the results to be a certain way? Um, that sort of thing. Yeah, 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 for sure. No, absolutely. So I guess it's all about thinking about, you know, where, well, where are the sources? Yeah. So who's actually providing the information and, and what is it measuring, I guess? Sometimes when we get some of these studies, in particular when they've been published in journal articles, yeah, yeah. it looks all very sensible. And then it's yeah. in a module material. You think, yep, that's black and white. That makes complete sense. You think, should I really be criticising that? Because clearly someone's given them money to go ahead and do some of this research, you know. So how do you then look at, I guess, where the parameters are in terms of 
what is and isn't acceptable to criticise. Say, for example, with the chocolate and memory, you know, yeah. they might have done some word tests, they might have done various things. How much can you really say that is evaluating memory? Well, you need to have a, well, for something scenario like that, you would have a really good look yourself at the methods that are being used. See if the methods, the tests that they are doing are something that they've done before or somebody else has done before, whether they're actually using um, background information from other scientists or whether it, you know, it's just a made up experiment that they've decided to do. And yes, you're allowed to be critical of anything. And being critical, as I think John mentioned, doesn't mean criticising necessarily. It means looking at it and deciding where it's coming from. Is there bias? Being open to the, what's, what you're reading, really. Claire says, um, surely spinach should be brain food, not chocolate. <laughs> and fact, I'm really liking the smoothies. It's making me feel a lot better. Mm. Okay, so it's all about deciding, I guess, then what you're being asked to do, not being yeah. afraid to look at really what that piece of research is doing, and then taking some of those frameworks that we'll talk about a little bit later to, to be able to, I guess, deconstruct some of those areas. Yeah. And it's just you, it's something that you'll learn as you go along in your degree. We're not expecting you to do this in level one, and level two, you begin to be a little bit critical. There'll be the odd essay here and there where you need to come up with a point and some evidence you know to prove your point so basically you're proving your point and then but level three that's when you're you'll be going more in depth and probably being critical of the actual methodologies a bit more so it's a stepwise progression of and learning a skill and practicing it and doing it you'll get better and better at it and John mentioned before how he didn't learn until he got to a PhD I think and I was probably I don't remember learning at university you know, how to do this. It's something that comes with time and experience and using some of the resources that we have at the OU. Lovely. Thank you very much. Do you know, that's been a really, really interesting session. And um, and, and thank you for coming along. And thank you for bringing I'll the chocolate brain. Oh, thank you. I shall enjoy those. That would be wonderful. <laughs> and so nice to, to have that reassurance, I guess, that this is a skill. It can be something that's yeah, learned. Yeah. And I guess then, you know, well, you'd naturally probably encourage students to look at some of those critical thinking booklets that the yes, OU provide. Um, and those are the skills for study website as well. And we'll put a link up on the resources page, if we haven't already, for that critical thinking book. It's a lovely little um, PDF of a booklet that you can download. It'll give you some tips on critical thinking and some of the tools in fact that we're using today so um so do do that thank you very much Jeanette that's thank been really very. really useful okay so before we have our next guest Ben I'd like to uh come back to the hot desk and see how everything's going with you so we've got some uh, some selfies in which is yep. great good so Marilyn and this is Marilyn's study buddy Ken's little Ken. hero there who else have we got so Lee's, check that out. Oh. Those fish are brilliant. So that's from Lee. Slightly damped at study buddies, I'm afraid. <laughs> There's Lee hoping for the wild weather today. I think someone's <laughs> someone's trying to win something, so thank you very much for that. This is Kate from the selfie study this morning. And then we've got a nice desk layout from Pete. So thank you for that, Pete. And then, as mentioned earlier, Andrea's yogurt and banana breakfast. Just looking good. Oh, very nice. And healthy, very healthy. There's not, not a sign of chocolate there at it's all. It's been a healthy theme today, hasn't it, Ben? Do you think it's because about? we're looking at critical thinking? Maybe, and brain food, etc. Obviously, with the likes of spinach, uh, there's people that have been talking about uh, fish. Yes. It's great for the brain, apparently. Um, <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. Um, That's all right. So th there's a lot of love out there for H Day, of course. Um, yeah, yeah. How's he getting on? Is he still doing uh, well? Doing well. We have poor a poor Annie. A I think for him. I think it's terrible. She's gone looking for it. what is in his bag. Oh. <laughs> Can you be mad at that face? <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. So why is what's what's so important that's in this bag that he needs to interrupt the Student Hub Live um, for? I, I don't know, to be honest. I mean, it's. Definitely not back here. I'll, I'll get under the desk a bit later. Um, but Has he got popcorn in there? Probably. Um, but as we've seen, there is a big health warning against yeah, but that. But he's not there, is he? No. 
No. Well, it's in the studio, though, isn't it? We've got to be a bit careful with that. Yeah, yeah. Stop the food police to come and arrest us. Um, but but yeah, we'll uh, we'll see what we can we can find. Um, yeah. Hopefully, we won't get arrested for anything that's in there. No, no, fingers crossed, because we, we like the student hub and we'd like to continue doing this. Um, so we don't want to get uh, done on any technicalities, do we? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. How, how are people feeling, Ben, then, about this whole idea of critical thinking? Are we feeling a bit more reassured now with the whole subject area? I appreciate it's a lot to sort of cover, but broadly speaking, is this idea then that the things can be learned, that things are integrated in modern materials and that it's a little bit different to just criticising things coming across well? Yeah, there's a lot of, of information that, that's coming up in terms of questions on the best way of doing it and how they're actually going to, to picturise it and, and make it make sense effectively. Um, a lot of There's a few art students on here that are wondering how, how you actually critically evaluate something with, um, with art, which is a subjective kind of view of things. Um, so yeah. there's, a, there's a few interesting questions that are coming up from there, which I'll drop in when I get hold of them some more. Brilliant. That's a really, really good point, actually, because I think so often we think, oh, well, it's very easy to critically evaluate something objective, something from the sciences, maybe, or social sciences. But art, you know, when you've got a piece of, of writing, um, that, that can sometimes bring about different subjects. And, and there are different ways of doing that within um, each discipline as well. So, um, so, yes, in particular philosophy, that can be an interesting old one to critically evaluate.